Welcome back to the 77%. Your future, here or abroad, a great youth debate. Uh, as you've seen in this video, from that standpoint, we will now begin the conversation. Let me start with you, Sister Bibiana. When you uh, look at the plight uh, you know, being suffered by some of the young women uh, across the city and across the state, uh, what comes to your mind in terms of your experience with them in the work you're doing as the coordinator of the Commission for the Support of Female Dignity? Thank you very much. When it comes to experiencing with these women that have gone out and come back, my own experience sometimes is of uh, wonder. And so also very pathetic listening to their stories, seeing them suffering. Whenever I listen to their story, it's so touching to the heart that sometimes I always weep. And then I look at them, I say, God, please intervene in the situation. And so their situation is so pathetic that you can go a long way to try to help them to come back to recover their dignity. And that's most of the time we try the little way we can to make sure to help them to pick up their dignity as a human being again and continue to live. So our work is there to give them hope. Our hope is there is to also to make them to realize God has not finished with them. And our work there is also to make them to realize that they can pick up and become what God has made them to be. And that's to giving them hope, giving them strength to pick up from wherever it is. Because it is only themselves that we help themselves. It's not we, we are there to lead them and encourage them. We've seen uh, two major trends uh, as it relates to these young women who have returned uh, from sometimes Italy, sometimes Libya, and some of the other places that they go to. And of the two trends, on the one hand, you see young women coming back trying to spread the message that indeed this, it, you don't know what you are getting into, that this is bad, that there are dangers ahead, etc. And on the other hand, you have young women coming back and taking their experience and turning it into a kind of a perpetuation of the problem. They themselves now become lead traffickers of other women in the area. How much of each have you seen and what, do you, what has been your encounter with both of those groups? Thank you very much. First, the encounter is, as I said earlier, encouraging the first group to pick up their self. And the other one too, like we have an experience of somebody that come back, after their integration economically, it reintegrated them back into the society. Unfortunately, or fortunately, some of them become a trafficker themselves. And uh, we try to see, you see, most of them have gone through this experience for a long time. And they are traumatized, and they are then to revenge. So our own, those of them that become traffickers afterwards, we are trying to tell them, not, don't revenge. God has a plan for you. So pick up your, your whatever you are and move on. So the revenging, is not a solution to the problem. And also, also help them. Some come back, some move on. All we know that we, have, we are doing our best to make them to be human beings again. Mr. Solomon, we understand that one of the major precursors of the uh, human trafficking process and indeed illegal migration, particularly out of Benin City, has been a kind of uh, preparation cycle uh, of these young women in local prostitution. I know that you've done a lot of work uh, leading the task force against human trafficking in Edo State. And I want to ask you, what, what have you seen in terms of uh, the organization of the human trafficking exercise and who or who may not be behind it? Well, thank you very much. I would like to use this opportunity to thank uh, Channel Television for bringing this live program to Edo State, Nigeria. A dual state has been the endemic state that has been you know, at the forefront of all the medias all around the world in terms of these uh, issues. And this is, the, this is what the government recognized and said, no, there must be a change of you know, these narratives. 
and he decided to set up a tax force. Now, before that, in dealing with this coach, we understand that there are factors involved in this, which are, which is, uh, this and the, 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 the motivational factors, that is, people dealing with the proceeds of abroad. She mentioned a while ago that uh, the victim of yesterday turned to trafficker to date. How? Those people, returnings of last year, the returnings of last two years, of last three years, who have seen, who have seen dinars in Libya, who have seen CFAs in Niger, who have seen dollars in Europe, now come to Nigeria to see that they don't have a home to stay. They don't have room to stay. They don't have food to eat. They don't have, you know, you, know, you see the, the, the depression. And they understand, they, they used to feed at least two times a day when they were in Libya, even though when they were in, in the midst of these hostilities that was going on there. And they said, no. Why don't I just tell the non person that the road is open and let's go? Why? Because he wants to go to a place where we have food to eat. He wants to go to a place where he feel he will have a brighter future. And that is what the governor has identified and said, no, let us deal with this issue now. What did he, what did he, what did he do? He set up a tax force against human trafficking. Then he domesticated the federal law to deal with those people, the offenders here in Benin. Then, and he gave us a mandate. And the mandate is intensify your advocacy in the rural areas to ensure that, yes, the potential migrants are not they don't be for victim. And those that are in, into this business, tell them, that, tell them that this business is no longer business as usual. And that is what we'll be doing. Now, if you allow those people to continue, the victim of yesterday, that are traffickers of today, the, that the returnees of today, we now also we still, we become traffickers tomorrow. Now, I understand what it feels to come back to Nigeria without a dime, because I've been there. I understand what it feels to sit at home without food a day. You look at the ceiling and say, God, where would the next me come from? You look at it, I understand that when you, this is how it feels to be in what is called tranqui, in a cage in Libya. And you will be praying, God, where will, where will that day come that I will see Nigeria? And suddenly you land, you find yourself in the Motala Mohammed, Mohammed Airport, and you did the sign of the cross, and you're in Nigeria. Three weeks later, you are thinking of going back to that country. You vowed about to go in your life. Right. Um, so, I think I want to open up the conversation to Divine. I mean, we're hearing Solomon's experience, which